Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Mahmoud Salim. I am a third year PG resident in Department of Radio Diagnosis at JNMC Aligarh. I will be presenting a case on neurofibromatosis 2, which presented as vocal cord palsy in a young child. So NF2 is a rare autosomal dominant neurocutaneous disorder, manifesting as a development of multiple CNS tumors. Patients with this disease have intracranial schwannomas, which are mostly vestibular schwannomas, intracranial and spinal meningiomas, and intramedullary ependymomas. The clinical presentation was a 15-year-old male presented with complaint of hoarseness of voice for past three months and pain in cervical neck region for past one month, which was radiating to right upper limb and associated with numbness. No other comorbidities were present. On examination, his vitals were stable, for abdomen was soft and non-tender. His laryngoscopic evaluation showed light parietal and right vocal cord palsy. His imaging findings on MRI were there were bilateral cerebellopontine and solid mass lesion with intracanalicular extension. Few intradural extramedullary mass lesions were noted at cervical dorsal level, and multiple small extramedullary nodular lesions were noted at the lower thoracic and lumbar vertebral levels, which were likely shown over. There was a well defined solid mass lesion in right carotid space, which was causing medial displacement of the carotid vessels and splaying of the internal carotid artery and the internal jugular vein, which was suggestive of weaker schwannomas. These are the sagittal cuts of the patient, in which we can see there are two well defined T1 hypointense, T2 ISO2 hyperintense lesions in the extramedullary region of the cervical spinal cord, which are causing significant mass break over the spinal cord. In the third image, we can see that there are multiple small, well-defined nodular T2 hypointense lesions in the lower dorsal and lumbar vertebral levels. In this image, we can see that uh, on the axial T1 post-contrast image, there is significant post-contrast enhancement of the lesion, which is causing significant mass effect over the cervical spinal cord. The same binding can also be confirmed on the stir core image. We can also see that there is a well-defined enhancing solid mass lesion noted in the region of the right carotid space, which is causing splaying of the internal jugular vein and the internal carotid artery. On the axial T2 weighted images, we can see that there are bilateral CP angle solid mass lesions with intracanalicular extensions. An axial T1 post contrast image taken at a lower level shows the solid mass lesion in the right carotid space region, which is causing splaying of the ICA and the IJV. So, NF2 disease is rare with an estimated prevalence of 1 in 50,000. They usually present in young adults in the age group of 18 to 24 years. Of patients with NF2, 50% have an affected parent, that is, they have autosomal dominant inheritance, and 50% have a de novo mutation. NF2 is located on the long arm of chromosome 22 and encodes the Merlin protein. It plays a role in contact inhibition of growth and has tumor suppressor function, at least in part, according to this mechanism. Although variably expressed throughout the body during human development, Merlin is highly expressed in adult neuronal cells, Schwann cells, and meningeal cells. So, a mutation in NF2 causes the loss of protein function, resulting in predisposition to tumor formation throughout the nervous system. Although meningiomas are often isolated finding in adults, their presence in a child should raise the suspicion of NF2. The presence of multiple and different types of spinal tumors should also raise a high suspicion of NF2. The diagnostic criteria for NF2 has been established by a consensus of experts. A person is thought to have NF2 if they have vestibular schwannomas in both ears, that is in bilateral CP angle schwannomas, or if they have a vestibular schwannoma on one side and one or several first degree relatives with NF2. This is a table which shows the frequency of the lesions which are commonly associated with NF2. And we can see that in the neurological lesions, bilateral vestibular schwannomas and other cranial schwannomas are common. Apart from this, spinal tumors, mostly extramedullary, are the common lesions. In ophthalmological lesions, cataracts are found in roughly 60 to 80% of these patients. 
and in the cutaneous lesions, approximately half of these patients will have some sort of skin tumor or skin clot present. This is the Manchester criteria for the diagnosis of NF2 on imaging, and it shows that if the patient has bilateral vestibular schwannomas, no additional finding is needed. If there is a family history of NF2, then a unilateral vestibular schwannomas or two NF2 associated lesions, which include meningioma, glioma, neurofibromas, schwannomas, or cataracts, are sufficient for the diagnosis. In unilateral vestibular schwannomas, two NF2 associated lesions, such as meningiomas, gliomas, are sufficient. And if the patient has multiple meningiomas, then either a unilateral vestibular schwannoma or two other NF2 associated lesions are needed for the diagnosis of NF2. Coming to vocal cord palsy, this is actually common in patients with NF2, but is usually found in adults with rates comparable to those of other cranial neuropathies. Previous two researches, which showed a cohort of 31 NF2 patients, which was done by Best et al., found that 71% had evidence of unilateral or bilateral vocal fold motion impairment. non hematal found an 86% rate of vocal fold motion impairment in a group of 22 NF2 patients. Now, this typically results from compression of the vagus nerve by neural tumors or surgical injury to the nerve during tumor resection. And there are currently no reports of idiopathic vocal fold palsy in patients with NF2. Our patient developed vocal fold palsy due to vagal nerve schwannoma. Another possibility is that the mobility impairment may have resulted from a subclinical peripheral neuropathy as these have been characterized in patients with NF2. Electrophysiological evidence of peripheral neuropathy in the absence of tumor masses in NF2 patients has been demonstrated. Our patient's young age at presentation is unusual as the two previous studies of NF2 patients with vocal cord palsy included only adults. Perhaps the early onset of this possible peripheral neuropathy portends a more aggressive disease course in these patients. Given their young age and potential for disease progression, patients have been managed with close monitoring and conservative treatments. These were the references that were used in this rare case presentation of a young male presenting with vocal fold palsy, which came out to be a case of neurofibromatosis type 2. Thank you.